Sarah, unmute yourself. Yo, can you hear me? Yep, you're all good. Okay, perfect. Let's start it again. I'm your host, Serafina. Welcome to this very special edition of The Check-In. Um, we are focusing on women's boxing and some of the things that women go through uh, in the sport. Um, you know, the ups, the downs, colorism. Um, we have Heather the Heat Hardy. Uh, we have Veronica Jeffries and Melissa Hernandez, who are three of my bestest girlfriends and some of the pioneers of the sport. Um, but we like to focus on some things outside of the ring and things that fighters go through on a day to day basis um, that the fans may or may not know about. And we got the champ, the queen, Veronica Jeffries in the building. What's going on, Ooh, queen? What's up? What's up? How are you? She about to apologize. Good. And yourself? What you doing right now? In the house? Send me a I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you got to settle down and be seated and, you know, prepared for this moment. You know what I mean? But all good. Um, tell the fans a little bit about who you are and, and what you've done in the sport. Um, you know, some people may not have heard of you because you came up in a time that you know people weren't really focused on you know fighters other than Layla Ali or the you know the big names in the sport you know 15 years ago 20 years ago so tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the sport and Marcus Davenu for two months uh, um well uh hold on give me one second sorry I thought I had you in my headphones but for some reason it's giving me problems Your name isn't Monica it's Ronica R O N I C A. And also, my last name is Jeffrey, not Jeffries. Well, they Hello? have it right. Yeah, they have it correct. So, tell us a little bit about what you accomplished in the sport and, uh, you know, about yourself and the things that, you know, you've done throughout your career? Because I, I feel um, like I started, you know who you are. Well, I started boxing maybe like around 2003, uh, just really working out. Didn't really, this boxing wasn't really on my agenda to become. It was actually just a form of workout, just trying to lose weight. Um, long story short, like I fell in love with the sport, um, was in the amateurs, uh did the golden glove in 2005 six and seven uh went to the women's nationals um you know ringside tournaments like all, all the tournaments um that was a part of boxing around our time uh, at the time the women didn't have the olympics so it wasn't something to see to is it was either the amateurs or the pros um i did i actually decided to turn pro because of my good friends, Melissa Hernandez and uh, Belinda La Quente. They nice. were, um, my, <laughs> they were definitely my inspirations. They were definitely, uh, you know, the woman that was like, you should do it, you should do it, you should do it. So then, you know, my mind is like, oh, maybe I should go pro or, you know, maybe I should do it. So they're the one who kind of lit the fire for that. Um, and with that being said, I turned pro. I wanted to go, oh, matter of fact, rewinding. In 2008, they were trying to see if they were going to put the woman in the Olympics, but then it got denied. So at that point, I really didn't even think it was going to happen. So I was just like, you know, then fine, I'll just go pro. So I went pro in 2009 and uh, fought until uh, 2019, was my last professional fight. I mean, I really fought for the passion and for the love of the sport. Um, as I say, like my inspiration was Belinda and um, and Melissa and you know Alicia Ashley and just to see them and how they 
uh, did the sport, you know, it inspired me to do, you know, it inspired me to be the best version of myself as well. So, um, you know, I won, you know, the, the best NABF, the um, WIBA. Um, I fought twice for the WBC silver. I, I fought for the um, WBC uh, gold as well um, with uh, Eva Wallstrom. And um, yeah, I was just always an elite fighter. I was just always uh, at the high spectrum of fighting. Not that I made the money that I probably would have liked to, but um, you know, boxing is something that I love. So that's what kind of kept me in the sport as long as I was there for. Nice. And I'm going to go ahead and let Melissa introduce herself. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you've accomplished in the sport and, uh, you know, Hi friends. Oh. Hi, friends. Hi, friends. Hi. All right. I'm Melissa Hernandez. I used to be regular Hurricane. And then over the years, I developed into Hurricane Shark. So as a, I started boxing because I was bored and depressed and life was terrible. And my friend got me in the gym. Next thing you know, I signed up for the Golden Gloves. I'm a person that always has to follow through with whatever I do. So I didn't really want to box, but I did it because I already signed up for a tournament. Go figure. The way the women's the way the women's were back then was there was no elite, there was no um, open class or novice. So as my first fight, I had to fight the four-time Golden Glove champion already in Madison Square Garden. So go figure. That's your first fight, you know, Golden Glove Finals. Whatever I lost, but it wasn't about losing. It was about going out there and showing out, and that's where everybody became a fan of me. You know, I, I was in a weight class I didn't belong in, and I fought somebody I should have not been in the ring in. Whatever, I did what I had to do. I got a fan basis. It was amazing. From there is where I decided to stay in boxing and not, because boxing had helped a lot with my depression and everything I was going through back then. And I was still a kid. I was like 23 years old. So to already be going through all that where you need to make life decisions, you know, boxing was the perfect outlet for it. So going forward from there, I ended up meeting Belinda Lara Cuente at a nationals tournament and Ada Velez, who's also a great champion. And they took me under their tutelage and I, you know, I left New York and I went to Florida for almost, for a little bit under a year. And that's where I stood boxing for almost a year of my life. I stopped my whole life and I boxed. Then I showed back up to New York out of nowhere to fight the Golden Gloves the next year over. And I started taking fighter of the night, stuff like that. I had evolved because I had had the pioneers before me take the time to show me these things. And then also it had also take me, take me out of my dark space. So I stood with boxing. I stood with boxing through the amateurs, didn't lose again. I lost two fights in the amateurs in the beginning of my career, never lost again until like my fifth or sixth pro fight. So it tells you a lot about what boxing does for you. You know, it does take you out of that dark place, but out of going back, so I won a whole bunch of tournaments. This, you know, did everything I had to do. But again, there was no novice and no open class. So I had to fight all the great fighters of my era at that time, way before I was supposed to. Turn pro at 25 because I had to. Amateurs was too expensive for women. You know, you got to pay for all these tournaments, this, that, and the third. I'm not a child. I was 25 at the time. I had to do what I had to do. Turn pro, you know, my first pro fight was not easy either. I fought the... Chinese national champion for a thousand bucks already had been twice golden glove champion, national champion, did all this. I had to fight the, you know, I had to fight somebody from abroad that I'd never seen that style before. Did what I had to do, snatched, you know, won the fight. By my third fight, I fought for a world title. That's unheard of for men's fighting, except for Lomachenko. But Lomachenko had 300 fights. I had 18. This is where the difference comes in. So I do believe that women's boxing, we've taken a lot of the back seat of all the things that we have done before the Olympics came. If it wasn't for pioneers like me, Belinda, Ada, Ronica, you know, we, we were there before the women that what they have now. And it also took us from all the dark places that we were. Like I was in, you know, I was in an abusive relationship for over 10 years. You know, but boxing got me to get up every day and win, win, win. I may, not, I, went, I may have not been winning at home, but I was winning in the ring. And that's what mattered to me. So going forward, 
you know, by the time I was 10 fights in as a professional, I think I already had won three or four uh, world titles already. Again, unheard of for women. So, I, you know, I took boxing by the horns, but I used it for all the right things. The one thing boxing never did for me is make me coin. You know, but it, women back then, we fought for pride, not for prize. And I hate saying it because I'm the one fighter that says it's prize fighting, not pride fighting. And my ass had to take it to, you know, fighting from the heart. And not only just fighting at the heart in the ring, fighting at the heart at home. And also fighting, the, um, being discriminated because I was Latina, because I was gay, because I was a female. All those things come into play. You know, I was told several times in the amateurs and in the beginning of the pros that I should femme it up. You know, it's hard for a woman that looks like I do to femme it up. It's not comfortable. And I remember you trying that at one point. I remember the Puerto Rican flag bikinis, honey. Bitch. <laughs> I do it today. No. <laughs> no, you develop a lot. Because again, like when I was a kid, I was 23 years old when I started boxing. I'm 44 now. You know, you learn a lot about yourself in boxing too. You know, and I had to live through the discriminations of a lot of guys being like, if you can sex it up, you'll sell more. Girl, I sex it up more than half these broads out here. You know what I mean? And I still ain't make the coin. But it's okay because I have accomplishments that people never can accomplish. I became pound for pound the best female in the world. I have six world titles in four different weight classes. You know, I may not have the money to show for it, but you can't take away what I gained from it. And also just the psychological thing behind me. I'm a stronger woman today because of boxing. Yeah, that's my spiel. <laughs> well, you know, you touched on a lot of the things that I was I was going to ask about was, you know, being a, a gay woman of color, um, you know, you have a lot of women like that came up in the sport, like Ann Wolf, um, Belinda, um, what was the girl you fought? Ada Velez, uh, yeah. So, Ada there's so many Velez. of us. But uh, Chevelle Hallback, you know, these yeah. amazing champions yeah. who really never got their flowers just because they didn't look the part. And, yeah, 100%. you know, and then, you know, that was, I was going to go into, you know, Ronica's career where, you know, again, an amazing fighter. And I think a beautiful woman, maybe not what they wanted to see as a champion, you know, because she never really like uh, showed her body all crazy and, you know, posed and wore a whole lot of makeup and wore the wigs and, you know, gone outside of herself. You know, you have Alicia Baumgartner now who's actually gorgeous, she's a gorgeous woman, you know, gorgeous, right? We know but, that. Um, right, but, but I mean, you <laughs> You had Ronica back then who was just as skilled, you know, yeah. just as gorgeous in my opinion, but really never got her flowers. And, um, you know, we all feel like her last fight was was a robbery. Oh, we got robbed. You know? 100% we got robbed. And, um, and it's just like you guys could never get that edge. And go after that, like, what keeps you going? Like, I know with Ronica, she was... You know, you were you were jaded by the sport after that last fight. You know, you said you were done. You're you're hurt. Like, you know, when you get to a point, you're not making more than ten thousand dollars for a world title fight. It like what keeps you going and still wanting to do this shit when you know you live in New York City. You got bills to pay. You know, and it takes a lot of time. Me personally, I stopped after my first fight. I was like, yeah, fuck this shit. I'm not doing this. I got a daughter. I like after I, you know, I lost and I walked home with my 400 bucks. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> like, it's not for me because I know what it takes to do it. And for me, it, it it's not worth it. So in in your generation, like even now, both of you are still fighting. Ronica's going into the tournament. Um, what's it called? The TCL. You're still, you know, if we got that phone call, honey, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, like, I'm like we got, mm. if we got the right call, Melissa be back in there, you know, <laughs> but like, like now going into this new generation to where, you know, you're not, you're not getting the same as the men, but it's a little bit better. Does it like make you 
want to like, mm, let me just, let me give it one last go. On it. Can't hear Ronica. She just. Ronica, you muted. She's muted herself. I didn't. I'm not. Okay. Hi, I'm back. And we're back. Um, back. <laughs> um, I would say this. I was jaded way before my last fight. Because I feel like in between, at some point, when you start to realize the work that you put in and things that you're not receiving, you know, you kind of get like this in and out. You know, I always say that boxing is kind of like a relationship or like a marriage where, you know, you love it one day, you hate it the other day. You, you know what I'm saying? You're leaving and then now you're coming back. You know, you have that back and forth. I think my last fight was just that last, like, all right, I, I, can't, I can't do it no more. But I love my sport. You know, I really, really love my sport to my heart that it's not some, even though I decided um, not to, I decided to retire, I still have love, that love for it that just won't let me leave it alone, you know, and it is what I do for work as well, you know, so I'm around it at all times. Um, but as well, I think that, um, you know, we are just some strong individuals. That's just what it is. You know, you just have to keep on pushing. You just have to uh, stand on 10 for what you love, you know, regardless of what it is, regardless that, you know, how the girl, and, and I love it that the women now are making more money, even though they're still not making as much as the men. And they're showing what we've been trying to show for the longest. That look, look, look at what we're able to do. You know, and not just as women, but as fighters, period. Well, touching on what you just said about, like, same fighters, right? So, like, I love boxing to boxing. I'm married to boxing. Me and boxing have the most dysfunctional relationship ever, right? It's toxic as this, as that. But I'm in it. You know, I'm in it to win it. Thing about it is, like, being a woman of color... And we're going to leave the gay part out of it for a while. Because, you know, for some reason, guys tend to be a little bit more drawn to the gay female trainers, because I think they think it's a little bit more masculine or something. I don't know what rides in their head, but whatever, whatever. Let's take the female of color, right? So like right now, living in Miami, I don't get a lot of clients like I used to in New York City. In New York City, I had mad clients and it was mostly male. People in Miami won't train with me because I'm a woman. That's the first thing they think. What does a woman know about boxing? Motherfucker, have you seen me fight, motherfucker? That's where I come from. I fight better than half the guys out there right now. And I'm like, I'm, I'm slick. You know what I mean? You can't, this is not between male and female. This is just a fucking skill. And I'm a little like disturbed about the whole thing because I've been dealing with that for the past decade that I've been living in Miami now with the, that boundary of that since you're a woman, you don't know about boxing. You know, the old flame, uh, Floyd Mayweather. You don't know shit about boxing. I know a lot about motherfucking boxing. You know what I mean? And it's hard to sit there and try to make coin off of something that you're generally amazing at because you're a woman. You know? And I was like, there's no such thing that a woman can't teach you how to box that a man can. You know, at the end of the day, I think that women, and I'm going to stand, I'm going to stand strong on this. We're better problem solvers. We're better under pressure. We do all this stuff that a lot of guys, I've seen guys break in the gym before they even start sparring. I see guys looking at videos, somebody spar before they spar them. We ain't do that shit in our day. We just showed up and fought. I didn't know who Kelsey Jeffrey was when I got in the ring. I was three and oh, she was like, what, 27 and three or some shit like that. I fought 10 rounds, jumped from a four round fight to a 10 round fight for a world title in her home. This is the this is what I tell people. I'm not. I don't tell them I'm a female trainer. I tell them this is the type of fighter that I am. You know, right. like, I, I and people, I get hit the lead. Yeah. You know, I so think it's, it, just gets a, it gets a little bit disturbing when you right, gotta deal course. with these boundaries for no reason. And don't even talk about the fact that I'm Latina. You know what I mean? Because everybody's like, she's Latina. She should be in the house washing dishes while she in the gym trying to show me how to jab. And right. I ain't say no lie. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think people overlook that in uh, in female boxing is that 
you know, maybe not so much now, but in your generation, you were for forced to fight the best very, very early on. But the co-hosts want to struggle. Like you fighting the best right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> but um, no, like you, you're forced to fight the best very early on in your career for little to no money. And, you know, that's got to take a toll on you, you know, because once, you know, let's say you lose, you lose to the best in your division. You're like, where do I go from here? But you lose early on, right? Yeah. Like in your career, well, this is the world champion now. Now do I still keep boxing or do? And you guys are forced to move up and down and wait and fight each other over and over again. I think you fought um, Layla McCarter, what, four times? Yeah, for no reason. For nothing. Right, because no there was no one else. Because I yeah, wanted to fight. fight. And the thing about right. it, like, putting Layla out there, nobody wanted to fight Layla either, because that's the thing too, with, with female boxing. They cherry pick. So for a long time, I was ostracized. When I became pound for pound, nobody wanted to mess with me. So I had right. to become, I became one of the top trainers because I couldn't fight nobody. You know, right. and then I'm not gonna fight Ronica Jeffrey. Why am I gonna fight my oh. friend? My you know what I mean? Friend. But that's how it was. Like mega fights were me against Ronica, me against Belinda, me against people that we shouldn't be fighting. Why should I drop down two weight classes to fight? But that was the thing that we did back then. That's the thing that the women yeah. did back then. We jumped everywhere, and like not to bring up a set, uh, old old sad song. Yeah, uh, yeah, Leila Ali versus. Um, the coal miner's daughter. They had no business in the ring together with Christy Martin. They had no business in the ring together. But here we go and we get these bullshit fights while the men got Floyd Mayweather versus the big show on WWF. And they got paid <laughs> millions of dollars. But that's, that's the boundaries that we're breaking through besides going through whatever it is that we're going through at home too. Because a lot of us, like Heather's not on, but Heather was a single mother. So on top of it, she had to go home and take care of her kid. You had to go home, Sarah, and take care of your kid. Not saying that a lot of the guy fighters don't do that, but it's not spoken about. You know, a lot of female fighters, we got to go to work, we got to go to the gym, and we got to go back home to take care of our kid. And some of us got to go home and take care of our man. You know, not me, pero some of us, you know what I mean? And but just home, period. Just... That pisses me off. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Ronnie. No, 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 no. I was just, I was just telling, but I was like, you know, you got to go home and take, take care of home, period. You know, it's not like the men where they have the wife at home that's going to take care of everything. And, you know, like they can just train and, you know, be away. Like women still have to deal with home, like whether it's kids, whether it's the, you know, like the husband, whether it's taking care of also going through female anatomy issues that, that part. is uncontrollable. You know what I'm saying? That that makes you emotional, that makes you hormonal, that makes you gain weight when you're supposed to be making weight. So then now you got to, you know, uh, d like d put on double plastic and be in the sauna for an extra 30 minutes. Now you want to scale looking dead because you just had to deplete yourself to the maximum just to make weight. You know, like yep. we go through so much and we don't get what we deserve for it. You know, like regardless of however, however they want to put it. That's why a lot of girls, uh, you know, you, you be in and out, in and out. And you're always fighting. Hi, princess. You're always <laughs> fighting. Yes, <I> was. <laughs> you always end up, you know, as you said, like how you fought. Um, what's her name? How many times? I fought that just I fought because, just, goddamn just, time. And wait right, for him belonging. But that is that that's all that's also the organization being cheap. You know what I'm saying? And it just makes sense because of, you know, and it's like you, especially at that time, you're just like, yo, this is this is my bread. This is how I'm making money. So I need that, you know, five thousand dollars or three thousand yeah. dollars. So let me just go, let me just go and get it. And it's not that you you're even walking home with that. By the time you pay the corner, you have fifteen hundred dollars in your pocket. No, a hundred. And like because we're Huh? Like, huh? I said I had my little four hundred. God damn it! It's like, all right, so check it. Like for me, when I was amateur and I boogied, whatever. Like, I was with a fighter for many, many years, and it was a very toxic relationship for both of us, right? And somehow I had to muster up the strength 
every morning to still go to the gym, to do this, to do that. I went, so when I went to the gym, it was dead ass like my only escape. So I had to be great at something, you know, because when, you, they, when I went home. When you in the gym, wasn't, wasn't your, your significant other in the gym with you? Yeah, I mean, my so shit was like, hard. wasn't really an escape? Yeah, my shit was hard. You know, I have a very different story from mad people. Because, like, my story, I don't ever really talk about it. You know, I was going through a lot of shit for mad years. Behind the, the clown that was in front of the camera, behind the starting the dancing, walking into the ring, the showboat, and all that. That was my, my half an hour that was actually for me. Because the rest of the time when I went home, things were expecting me. This, that, I was scared when I was home, I was this. Only time I was actually fearless was when I, when I was in the ring. So only time I actually had control of my destiny. When mm -hmm. I was home, I didn't know if I was gonna come home to a punch in the face or my shit being outside or somebody else being in my house. See, there's the thing that a lot of us go through we don't talk about. You know, gratefully years later, I got out of my situation. But, you know, when you're young and you're, you're destined to be great, you kind of try to put all this toxic shit in the back burner and that's where mental, you know, mental illness and mental awareness comes in. You know, I look back to 10 years ago and I'm like, damn, like, thank God I got out of that. You know what I mean? I was what, like- What gave you the courage to get out of it? Man, this, what got me the courage to get out of it was I just couldn't anymore. There comes a point in your life where it's like, I'm either gonna get killed mm. or I'm gonna kill her. And none of us deserve that. Right. You know what I mean? And then it was leaking into my fights. Like I will go into the fight already with a black eye, mm. you know? And I'm not, I don't lie. I've never been a fucking liar. I'm not gonna be like, oh, I got it as foreign. Nah, my partner gave it to me. Why? Because we talked about something stupid and she got mad. But these are the things that as women also, we don't tend not to talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and then go, going into a gay relationship, for some reason, women feel it's okay to hit each other. You know, and guys That's as, as well. Gay relationships. Yes, yeah, same sex uh, relationships always tend to think that it's cute to hit each other. That shit ain't cute. Abuse is abuse, whether it's mental, emotional, or physical. And being an athlete, it's almost frowned upon to talk about it. Right. Because they're like, oh, ain't you a boxer? Can't you protect yourself? Right. You can't protect uh -huh. yourself against somebody you fucking love. Right. Uh -huh. And you it's the emotion that hurts the worst. Like the, the, I can take the physical, the physical, you know, whatever, but it's the emotional, mental yeah. abuse that and hurts the most, that has lasting when, effects. When you get to Definitely. a point, like the point that I was at, where I was like the creme de la creme at a point, I couldn't really fucking talk about it. Nobody wanted to hear it. Nobody wanted to hear it. Oh, she, she got hit by her girlfriend. That's her problem. She should probably be with a man or whatever, whatever, you know what I mean? I listened like, to you, friend. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> no, but it's like with these things, it's like these are the things that women have to overcome. You know, like I even watch women, like again, not to bring up, but to bring up Heather, like I have to watch Heather with her baby. I have to watch other women with their babies. You know, I had three babies, I had my three dogs. I know it don't sound like a lot, but you still gotta go home to them every day. And I fought the five grand for the for the world championship fight. Somebody has to put kibble on the table. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Like some of us got to take care of our cousins. Some of us got to take care of our moms. Things like that. And the thing of it is that the women go through that. Some of us we carry all that shit on our backs. And mm -hmm. like, I hate when we talk about it. Like we're being interviewed for a big fight, and we talk about it. Oh my God! Can you believe that? I'm still a fighter first. But understand that I have this big backpack on behind me. And for those 20 minutes that I'm fighting, half an hour, I'm a fucking superstar. You know what I mean? And I think going to Veronica said, that's why we did it. Back then, that was our escape. That was our only chance to get out of whatever we were going through. Y'all grew up in the South Bronx. You know what I mean? That shit wasn't pretty. It isn't the Bronx that people see now. All the buildings were burnt down, this, that, and the third. I was blessed to be asked to go to Gleason's. You know what I mean? I felt like a star to go to another borough to go train. I came out of a PAL in the Bronx. You know what I mean? And these are things that, you know, 
women don't really talk about all the time. They, we don't talk about these trials and tribulations and then going into the ring and have to fa- fight the baddest bitches. You know what I mean? Sorry, Ronica. You can say your thing. That's okay. <laughs> no, of course. Listen, <laughs> you preaching, sis. You are preaching right now. I was just, just a tally back on, you know, like you're just saying things and my mind is just like going like, damn, you know, uh, that we, re- if you really think about it, we really fought just to continue to prove that we were, we are meant to be there, you know? Yep. And as you said, like, nobody want to hear this and hear that. And I feel like as a woman in boxing, it's like, if you say something that is less of a fighter, like, oh my God, you know, this happened, that happened. It's like, oh, but you chose to be here like well then you know like we'll go in the kitchen if that's where you belong so it's like you always have to put on this mask of toughness and you know what i'm saying um you can't be vulnerable you can't you know you can't be that part of yourself because you're choosing to be a fighter as if like you know you 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 gotta hide that part because you you're you're, you're scared that you know what i have to look this part in order for them to believe that I'm worth being here or for them to not be like, whoa, well, why are you here? If you feel like that, well, why can't I, why can't I do both? So then you tend to kind of just hide that part of yourself, you know, keep on putting this front of everything being good or keep putting this front of, you know, pushing, as you said, having that backpack on your back, carrying it everywhere you go and just keep pushing through. You know, and as, you know, as colored women, we do that all the time. We have to do 100%. that all the time in in the ring, out the ring. You know how many you know how many times I've been looked over. I remember one time um, I was uh, talking to somebody about you know promotion and things of that sort, and so they told me that oh well they don't have the money like the money in their uh, I guess the money the money in the budget you know to add anybody on, but then. Every time I hear, like, you know, on boxing news, you know, like, they're adding another fighter. They're adding another fighter. So I, I, was, I was like, well, I don't understand because I am a fighter. So <laughs> what happened? You know, like, I've, I've, you know, I won the gold. I felt like I did all the things that they said that you're supposed to do. Like, you know, like, you win the gloves. You know, I was on women's national team, you know, international this. You know, won all the fights, you know, as a professional. You know, like, I'm 17 and won as a professional. So where, where? in my record or where does it say like I'm not worthy of more you know so then at some point it's just like you know like what, what else you want me to do like hop on one foot and rub my head I can't I'm done you know well, I, no, I'll tell you a quick little story um, recently with Elham McCallid um, when uh, was it when she when she fought at Baumgartner Right. And um, I believe they had Rashad Mahdi on the card as well. Um, they offered me $35,000, the same, which around the same that Melissa got to fight Chantel. That's kind of like their number um, to offer women. Um, they offered me 35000 for her to fight Alicia Baumgartner. I came back with 50. I said, give us 50 grand. They said no, they refused, but it's undisputed. So you can't turn that down, right? It's, you know, Melissa, like you get that, that kind of call, you gotta take it. You gotta take it. You gotta take it. You know what I mean? Right, you don't have no choice. Right. It's you boxing, not, you never know what's gonna happen, baby. Take you might not hands. ever get that call again. So right. um, I said, fine. A week later, after we signed the contract, I get a call for Anthony Peterson to fight Rashad Mahdi. Guess how much they offered me? Mac um, on. 50 grand. What I asked for what I asked for Elham to make to fight for undisputed. Anthony Peterson was fighting Rashad Mahdi on a fucking undercard of that fight. Right. Wow. Make it make sense. So you mean to tell me more people are buying tickets to watch Anthony Peterson than Elham to fight for Undisputed against Baumgartner? Stop it. Stop it. You know, and it's... As just a producer, I got to interject here. Like, knock it off. Elham has zero... 
Like, she's not known here. Anthony Peterson, at least as a Peterson brother, his story was plastered all over HBO. Like, Elham is... No one knows her, let alone spell her name. I understand the champion of the world. As a B-side. As a B-side. But she don't bring nothing. But she don't bring... Okay, so what what, what would a man get for for Undisputed? As a B-side. I'm not trying to get on the conversation on that, and I'm just saying, like, in terms of... What she brings from marketability, you know she brings nothing. That's your f- if, you, if you put Devin Haney in there right now, you, right? Again, against a bad the example. No name from France, the no name from France would get at least a million dollars. Hell no. No, 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 no. No, Chris, listen, Chris Ariola fought Deontay Wilder in Birmingham and made 130000 Yeah. No, I no. fought on that card. No, there's plenty of people that don't make a lot of money. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot of people that don't make no, good I'm, money. I'm aware of that, but for Undisputed at the Garden, they could have gave me that 50. Yeah, but they could have gave me that I mean, 50. look, uh, did Elham bring a belt? She didn't She didn't bring a belt, I however. Right, so you're getting an opportunity at Undisputed. You ain't, you ain't part that. of Undisputed. But I'm sorry, I'm being quiet. My bad. Producer. Yeah, I, I understand <laughs> what you're saying. But my, my whole point is, if, if she were a man... That that would be a whole different number, a whole different number. Uh, I mean, when look, when watch you tell on the undercard of Devin Haney for the same belt, the WBC belt for the same belt when she fought Chantel Cameron, I think Devin made something um, one point something or I don't I don't he made over a million dollars. Melissa made thirty grand. Why you keep making me interject? Melissa and Devin have two different social medias. Devin, Devin has had a million, practically a million followers since he was like 20. And now he's working on his third million. In this generation, in this day and age, we all know that 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 you need to do more than just fight. You need to do more women than just have, look women good. Have, women, women never will get the same as men, period. It will never happen. Well, let's just put it out there. I mean, I'm gonna. When it comes to that, Melissa could have 10 million followers right now. It wouldn't make a difference. Amanda Serrano has. I think it eventually will happen because there's. Make what men make. I think I think it eventually will happen because there is equal equal pay in other uh, professions for women equal to men. Not basketball. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me say this. Wait, wait. When it comes to female sports, let's bring up tennis, right? Because we're talking about pay equality. The men get paid way more. Men are always going to get paid more than women. We know this. We live in a man's man's world. You know what I mean? We don't have to be comfortable with it. But that's that's just what it is. Listen, I love the fact that Amanda Serrano is finally making a million. You understand? I really am. I'm, I'm happy for her. Mm-hmm. You know, do I believe that I deserve more than that? Fuck yeah. I think I fought the better opposition my whole career. But then, like he said, we're in different times. I don't believe in that social media bullshit. You know, I mean, I think it's the dumbest shit that ever happened to to sports. It was fake. But it's fake. It, it's because it's fake. You know, it's a clip. You know, but I get it. I get that the times are changing. This is I'm 44 again, mad older than everybody else. So I don't get what the, where it comes from. Like the 10 second clip of this. That, it's like when you go to a gym and they doing this pad fucking work, and you're like, yo, you're building fa- fake confidence. You're gonna get your ass whooped in the club doing that bullshit, you know, pad work. But look, when it came like Sarah, going back to what he said, yeah, men sell more tickets. You understand? And that's what it comes down to. It comes down to the gate. I'm a big Alicia Bumhart fan. Big, 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 big. I think she can fight her ass off. But how many tickets does she sell? You understand? And that's where and I hate that I'm saying this, that YouTube promoter, this is where he's kind of doing his job a little bit. Because he's putting Amanda up here. He's putting up places where she's selling out the gate. And he finally put her as the main event and him as the co-main event. You know uh-huh. what I mean? And I like that and I appreciate that. Don King did it with Christy Martin. You know what I mean? But it's this is where it becomes... Oh, oh. You oh. feel where I'm coming from? I, I don't know, because it went... Burr, 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 <laughs> went wrong. No, that caught me off guard. That didn't catch nobody. Okay, that caught That's me That's feeling where she's oh, coming from. I'm feeling where she's oh. coming from. Okay, okay. I hate it here. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I need to find something to get our horn. 
I really want to be invited back onto the show for whatever. I love chopping it up, especially with my ladies. And the producer dude, I just met you. I fucked with you heavy. I love, we should have a discussion. So, guys, more mamas. I'll catch oh, you on yes. the flip side. All right. Oh man, Bye. she gotta she gotta cut out. Yeah, she gotta she gotta go to work. I she was definitely to wanting to get your guys' opinion as you know three female boxers. Obviously, Bum Garner's been campaigning for that uh, that fight with Clarissa Shields, but obviously she would have to move up. You guys are the fighters, not me. You know what do you feel about that? Um, I just feel like it's. Uh, first of all, it would be a disadvantage for Clarissa to even come down to 47 because that's where they're campaigning to meet. It don't make no sense. None of it don't make no sense because Clarissa's a big girl and although Baumgartner can come up to 47 because she's at 30, well, she's at 30, 30 right now and that's two weight classes. I mean, which I think that she's able to, to, to come up, but for Clarissa to come down to 47, that would not make no sense. So unless that, and why should Clarissa come down to uh, to 47? She really I'm, don't need to. I she mean, would just is, be there, is there a bigger new fight for her anywhere else? A bigger new one? Because yes, the Marshall fight is there as a rematch and so is the French Sean Cruz as a rematch. But, you know, we... I'm just thinking from a boxing standpoint, you guys were talking finances. Like, there's no other pay-per-view. I'm a man. That's the pay-per-view I want to pay for. I'm not paying for Marshall. I'm not paying for French Sean Cruz. They buddies. Well, I'm going to believe that they about to beat each other up. No, I want the girl who she feels disrespected by, the one that she thought was friends, and now all of a sudden you calling me out, and they on that caddy shit. I'm paying for that. Yeah, because that's entertainment for you guys, but it don't make no sense. Like, for Clarissa to make 47 don't make no sense because she'll be depleted. I don't even think not, she should be 47. That's what, what about, I'm trying to what say. What about the fact that she was girl. willing to do it for allegedly, and I say allegedly because obviously she wasn't able to actually do it, but she did do an interview saying she would do it for Chris Cyborg, which I know it's a crossover fight because of the MMA thing, but I, I, I mean, I don't know that Cyborg is like that much bigger than a Bum Gardner universally or globally, but that's on y'all to let me know. I think in MMA, in MMA, she's a really big deal. In boxing, she's not. Even though I saw the other day, I think she had her like first boxing and she had a knockout. Blah blah blah. Um, but even that, like, who was gonna pay for that? Maybe some. It, it doesn't, you know, because everybody wants to do the Mayweather and um, McGregor, Conor McGregor situation, and we saw it. And you know, although Conor McGregor, you know, did, you know, he. He lasted, or however you want to put it, but that's all of it is for entertainment. That's not real, like okay, that's your weight class, but like Errol and Terrence, like that made sense, right? This does not make sense. This is just for this is all of this is for clout and entertainment. I, so I gotta, oh, that's why I wanted Melissa to be here because Melissa moved up two divisions as a three and no fighter. So you telling me an undisputed champ with all the experience she got now, multiple different training camps, the rumors she's training with Bomac in them now, like, why can't she move up two divisions? Well, females do it all the time. So first of all, Melissa didn't have a belt at other weight classes. Like, she came in as the challenger. They both are, are undisputed champions in their own weight class. So when they come to 47, what belt are they fighting for? Money. There's no what other female... What ac what acclimate but what acclimation are they what acclimates are they fighting for? You still want it was yes, money, but you still want something. Yeah, but Ronica, uh -huh. the, Ronica, when has a female been a pay per view star? It's the first time two American women could actually be on pay per view. Like name, like what pay per view fight is you willing to pay for a woman? Tell me. But who said? But who said it was going to be on pay per view? What? It would be. I'm just asking. It would be pay per view. I'm just, I'm just asking. No, it would be pay per view without a doubt. Without on a who's doubt. Paper, on who? The Zones? The Zones. She's still with Eddie for sure. Matchroom, uh, excuse me, Top Rank is certainly interested in Bumgarner. That's, that's, that's a heavy rumor in Las Vegas. Uh, she's trained in their gym not too long ago. She was doing sessions with, 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 with Bomac that was there. Um, I, it could be any television, but what I'm saying, even if you don't believe that there's television, name another female fight that you can make that is an American pay-per-view. Yeah, but my question is that, and uh, 
Because you know they're going to have to give them a million dollars and more. You know that they're going to ask for the highest amount of money. So who's going to be able to, who's going to give that to them? I mean, I don't know the, the numbers. That's up to the promoters to, to gonna, find it out. But I think that, they could certainly, what, I think they could certainly make it on the back end. Like, I think, I think another female pay per view would be um, Baumgartner and Serrano. Listen, um, that that would make sense. That would make more sense to me than anything else. They're close to. They're, Serrano they're don't want to do it together. though. Serrano, Serrano's been avoiding that fight, like in, from a from a. I'm already have done more than you, you know, type. And she got a bigger fight ahead of her, which is the Katie Teller rematch. Um, but Clarissa and Bumgarner, in my opinion, it don't, don't have it don't, a fight. Don't make sense weight, it does not make sense weight wise. It wouldn't like, be for a vote. It would have to be at a catch weight because Clarissa can't right. make 27, maybe 54, but, you know, it would What's definitely the, have to be a catch what, weight. What was the rumor that Clarissa did in 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 Detroit? Like I I I thought I heard like fifteen to forty five thousand pay per view buys, right? When she did that Detroit show. I don't even remember to be honest with you. And look, and that was like a fight TV. But hypothetically, though, what number do you think Bumgarner and, and Shields get to? Fifty dollars. Pay per view, fifty dollars. Either the Zone or ESPN, because obviously top rank. If they do want to sign Bumgarner, and if not, she's you know maybe the zone resigns her. Clarissa has dealt with the zone. So listen, I think that if 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 Clarissa could have made the weight, if she was if Clarissa was at fifty four and she could like that was her weight class and she could make the weight at forty seven and Barna go up to forty seven or you know whatever it is, I think it would make sense then. But we have to think about like. Clarissa's coming from 68. The low, I think the lowest she'd been was 54. She can't, she's not making 47. Has she's not making, been, has she has been, 47, she's not making 47 healthy. Mm. Has there been any uh response from the WBO and the IBF in regard or and, and the WBA in regards to her belts? I know the WBC released a statement. WBC back then then WBO followed. I haven't I don't know anything about WBO or, or IBF at just is never. she cleared to fight yet? Yeah. What do you think about that, Ronica? About the situation with her, um, with the Vada that. stuff. Mm. Um, I don't. I listen. I don't know if it's true or not. Like we, you know, and according, according to the paperwork, it's saying that obviously they allowing her to fight because they didn't find whatever it is that they were saying in her system, right? No, that's not true. No, that's not what it said. So what, so, so what did they say? Why, why are they allowing her to fight? They're saying that uh, she, she was able to prove that uh, she didn't know that she was taking something. Isn't that correct, Ness? Like she, she didn't know or something, or she said she didn't know. And Somebody got thrown under the let, bus. Let me That's Google. Let me just Google because I don't you know, know so, exactly. So here's, here's my thing on the she topic. She might have it on her Instagram last time I remember, though. I, I like Alicia. I fuck with Alicia. Heavy, right? But, you know, I, I also manage a girl she recently fought. Right. Right? So... For me, it's it's like if she was on some type of steroid or enhancement, mm -hmm. right? She potentially robbed me of managing the undisputed champion of the world. If she did, personal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If she did it, but with her explanation as to what happened she said she didn't know if she was taking it for me if you find that valid as a sanctioning body then that opens doors for any other fighter to come in and say the same thing and knowingly take something and just pick a random dude and give him a couple of dollars and say just tell him you gave it to me and i didn't know 
But didn't Can- didn't Canelo do it? Didn't this one do it and that one do it? Like the men been doing all it that, for but a lot, they were stripped or they were uh, no. suspended or yes, you know what? Well, Canelo, you know, were- Canelo was placed on suspension, but again, a- a- every every finding is different. Her adverse finding was not clenbuterol. Uh, but you are correct. The WBC, and I quote, says WBC found Ms. Bumgarner not guilty of intentional uh-huh. ingestion or consumption of a banned substance for performance enhancement purposes and confirmed her as a reigning WBC super featherweight world champion. In addition, the WBC ruling that the accuracy and validity of the adverse finding justifies placing Ms. Bumgarner on probation for one year from the date of the sample yielded and the adverse finding was collected or until July 12, 2024. Damn, that's about to be up. Okay. Mm-hmm. So she's on probation for it. Yeah, so. she was on probation for a year like Canelo. Canelo was six months. She got a year. Okay, but, so technically but they ran it retroactive. Luckily. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say, so technically, you know, they put her on probation, so they are reprimanding her for just for having it anyway, and mm-hmm. you just have to take it how it is. I mean, and I mean, obviously, this just makes everybody, you know, continue to just keep side eyeing because everybody who has been caught and, you know, miraculously, they didn't find nothing, but they suppose you still look at them like, are you are you like, are you sure? You know, like, because why, why was this in your system? But we just have to get the benefit of the doubt at that point. Or whomever ends up fighting that individual has to ask for more clarity on what the indiv- what the other person is taking. In, in my opinion, now, one of the, one of the uh, guests said, guilty or not, her career is stained forever. And I, I absolutely agree with that comment. Um, she'll always be looked at as a cheater, you know, whether you believe it or not. Um, and, and that's unfortunate. But at this stage of the game, there's so many different things that people can take that are, uh, you know, undetectable, whether you're, whether you're cycling on or off. Or At this point, I say just let them take whatever they want to. Then it's fair game. <laughs> Everybody could take something. No, you know what I mean? People no. could die in the ring anyway. No, because no, you 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 can't just because something like that happened, you can't say that because not everybody wants to live like that. Not everybody wants to cheat. I'm I mean technically, you know, the the taking, you know, the Vada test is, you know, randomly is supposed to help it, but we just have to figure out another way or something that has to be a little bit more intense or maybe the rep- you know, the, the thing is what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, what about, is that- but what about the team? What is, you know, it's not only on her, it's about the people who surrounding her too, or, you know, who's surrounding whoever, you know, who, whoever's getting caught or getting tested. And then these things are coming up or maybe these tests need to be done beforehand and come back before the fight happens, you know, so that way you have that information. What I'm saying is that just like anything else, uh, the sport evolves, uh, nutritional supplements evolve. There's new things that come out all the time that aren't on a list and, you know, people could take and you just don't know what they're taking. You know, I'm, I'm sure yeah, there's but that's plenty- exactly why this ruling is 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 fair, because like you said, everything evolves. Supplements come out so you can take something like. The WBC said unintentionally, unknowingly. Right. It is a poss- it is a possibility. Like there, however, there is a, there is a list, list on Vada. If you go on the Vada website, you can you can look at the list and whatever it is that you're taking. I and I do believe that you know even with Melissa when she was here training to fight Chantel, you know she had this little steroid thing for her her uh, elbow or, or or her shoulder or something. It was like a, a needle and I was like, wait, hold up. Let me check and see if you could take that. And sure enough, it was on a, on a banned list. She didn't take it. Before you put anything into your body, when you're fighting on that level, you should be checking diligently on what you're putting into your body. And it's very easy to find out whether it's banned or not because there's a list on online that anybody could look up. 
But look what you said. You as, you know, her manager and her team did your due diligence of making sure that your fighter is clean and anything her that she can take. That too, it's their career. It's not my career. Right? No, no, I, but I, 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 I understand that. But as a team, that also has to be something done as well. Because some fighters, as you know, are not going to do that. Like that's just that's that's just being real. So the team has to make sure of that too, because whatever happens, whatever falls on the fighters fall, falls on the team, you know. Because we, if we're all a team, if I if 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 I do something incorrect, my whole team now has to deal with what I've done. So it doesn't only fall. It does, it's not like they can be like, well, that's on you. No, it's everybody. So we all have to pay attention to what is supposed to go in and uh, and go in our body and not come, go in our body. So that's just what it is. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Well, um, I think, is are we just about up in time, Ness? Yep. We got about another six minutes but to All complete right. the hour. Well, Do you have any questions, Ness? No, I, I mean, I, I, have, I have another little question for you. Mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about sexual harassment in the sport. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Have you experienced that? Like, what what have you gone through as a fighter, as a woman, from trainers, managers? What was your journey in that avenue like? I'm going to say, God bless. I've never been sexually harassed. Um, as a woman, of course, you know, uh, men try to insinuate things. Um, they might try, especially being a woman in a man's sport, right? There's always somebody trying. Always somebody trying to, you know, be like, hey, you know, <laughs> you know, but I, I've 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 been blessed to not been violated or disrespected in any type of way, um, where I felt like uncomfortable being around uh, people, you know. But just generally dealing with, you know, like men being like, oh, you know, I think you're really beautiful, and you know, or I mean, I've and I've never had the, I've never had somebody try to say like, well, if you do this, then I'll give you this, you know. Mm. I've never had to deal with that. So, but I know people who have, you know. I definitely know a lot of women in this boxing industry who's been uh, disrespected, who's, you know, by trainers, managers, uh, promoters, you could just name it. The offerings go high, you know, but because they feel like as if, if as a woman that, oh, that you need me. So if you want this, then you need to do this thing, but no, I, I'm, I, I want it, but I don't want it like that. Early in my career, I was um, approached, I'm not gonna say a name, but a, by a big promoter um, that if I did a sexual favor, he would give me a job. Mm. Very early on. And uh, I didn't do it, <laughs> but um, that was when I lived back in LA. And uh, for me, that was like, it was more of a motivation than anything. Cause I'm like, I'm gonna see this motherfucker again and I'm gonna be in the same ring as him. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be able to look him in his face and be like, I'm here and I didn't have to do that. Right. You know, so- um, oh, I love that. The sexual, sexual harassment was more of a, a motivation than anything. Cause I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to get to a point to where guys are going to be even scared to talk to me like that <laughs> because, because now I hold some weight, you know what I mean? Right, right. And you're standing, you're standing, you're standing on your own. So you don't, you don't have to worry about even having somebody come at you like that because you've done so much in this game and uh, you know, you've been in tables and in rooms with people who are probably above the person that you're talking to. So, you know, kudos to you. Anyways, Ronica, I, I love you for coming on and I'm, I wish Heather could have made it on, but I know she has something she had to get to, but um, it's been a real pleasure. And anytime you want to come back on and just talk about anything, you let me know. 
tell the people to come look check you out at that TCL. Let them know when that starts and and how to how to how to watch you and where to find uh, you. Well, uh, thank you for having me on and I appreciate it. And as always, if there is any time that you need me to come on, you know that I will always make myself available. And yes, I will be joining that TCL team. Right now, they haven't given me a lot of information about uh, the stream. I know that you can be able to stream it and things of that sort. They haven't given me specific information. They're still dealing with some contract stuff. But I do know that uh, the first... Um, part of the tournament is supposed to start uh, in late March. So uh, I want everybody to, um, you know, chime in, come in and see us. There's a, you know, a bunch of other girls who's also going to be uh, a part of this situation. And just, you know, Team New York, period. Um, I This is the first, this, this tournament or this um, organization is something that's fresh and that's new. So it's, you know, it's kind of exciting to see, you know, how it unfolds. So. That's cool. That's what's up. Well, I saw a little comment here um, asking if we're going to be showing the fight tonight, the Teofimo fight at Diamantes. We definitely are, and we definitely have Wi-Fi if you need it. Um, Ronica, hopefully you can make it out. I'd love to see you um, okay. drink from me. But, yes, thank you for coming on. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you, Ness, for having us once again. Oh, all right, hold on, you guys. Uh, Ronica got a super chat here. It says, Ronica is one of the best female fighters Hope she comes out of retirement. That's fresh New York City. Aw, tell him I say thank you. Sure. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, All right. Um, all right. Peace. All right. Take care.